we're going to do some NMR concepts with Dr. Romano. Hey, Dr. Romano, I like your cat shirt. Why don't we forget about my cat shirt and let's get cracking on the um, problem at hand here. I want to go over a few basic concepts that a lot of students have a little bit of difficulty with, especially for the DAT exam. The best move that you can do is to do all the problems in the DAT destroyer. If you can do all those spectroscopy problems, you'll be good to go on the DAT. Let's just go over a few little concepts to make things easy for you. I want you to look at the first problem. And I give you a question in which we have a ketone, and I want to know in an NMR, what would be the splitting pattern? First thing we're going to go to is here, a CH3. You jump to your next door carbon. So if this is the carbon in question, you jump to the next door carbon, and there's no H's. So that means that that will give a singlet. So these protons, the H's, that's what we're looking at, that's on this carbon, gives a singlet. If you go to this carbon right here, you jump to the right of you, there's no carbons. You jump to the left of you, and that carbon has three. And you use what we call the N plus one rule. You add three, which is these three, add one, and that would give you four. So that means that those H's, those two H's, would end up giving a quartet. Likewise, let's go for these H's. Those H's are on this carbon. Jump to the next door carbon, and then see how many H's are on your neighbor. Since there's two H's, two plus one gives you three, and that will give a triplet. The hydrogens that are closest to the negative element or group is more de-shielded, meaning that that electronegative element which was electron density. When something is de-shielded, the signal will be downfield. Downfield means near the larger numbers. So in this example, three H's are next to a carbonyl, but here only two. So two would feel the pull of the oxygen to a little bit more of an extent. So that would put you at about 2.3. Whenever you are adjacent to a carbonyl group and you're a methyl group, it comes in around two. So if I ever asked you for a ballpark number, a methyl group next to a carbonyl is around two parts per million or two on the delta scale, where if there's a CH2, it would be a little bit more 2.3, and if there was only one H, maybe a little bit more than that, like 2.5. I know the Klein book gives a silly formula. Don't use any formula. As long as you have a ballpark idea, you're good to go for the DAT exam. Also, going back to this, in the carbon-13 NMR, we're looking at the number of different carbons. And here there's no symmetry, so there would be four signals. And the only thing I really want you to know for a big landmark is a carbonyl group in a carbon-13 spectra would come in at around 180 ppms. That's the distinguishing feature there. If we go to the next one, this is a little bit more challenging. And I labeled those H's I'll call A, this H will be B, these H's would be the C, these H's would be D, the E, and the F. Those two methyl groups are bonded to this carbon. And this carbon has one H on it. So those, H, those H's here would end up giving you a doublet. How about B? Well, there's the mother carbon. To go to the right, there's nothing. You go up, there's three. You go to the left, there's three. Three and three is six. You use the N plus one rule, it would give a septet. Sometimes, instead of saying a septet, you would just say multiplet, because in real life, the lines would usually be very, very close. If we go to letter C now, you look to the left, nothing. You look to the right, there's two. 2 plus 1 is 3, that would give a triplet. Letter D would be done in the same fashion. Nothing to the right, 2 to the left, and add 1 would be a triplet. If we go to letter E now, those two protons, if you move to the left, there's nothing there. If you move to the right, this carbon has 1, so 1 plus 1 would give you a doublet. And finally, letter F, the aldehyde proton, it's next door to two. You jump to your neighbor, two plus one is three, so that would give a triplet. The distinguishing feature here is you ever see an aldehyde proton, 
you would look for a signal in an NMR between 9 to 10. Very important, 9 to 10. If we go to the carbon 13, these two are the same. So those two carbons, now we're only looking at carbon, so be careful. There's one carbon, these are the same, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that would mean you would get seven signals in the carbon 13 spectra. If we go to letter C now, the minute you see a benzene ring, think what I call lucky seven, that's gonna give a signal around seven. This H, if you look here, this carbon has no H's. So that would be a singlet. This would give you a quartet because it's next door to a carbon with three. Three plus one is four, it's a quartet. And these three, if you look next door, there's two H's, two plus one will give you three. So this would give a triplet. If we looked at the numbers, a CH3 group next to an O is around three parts per million. So as you can see, if it's a CH2 next to an O, that would be a little bit over three. And then there's also a benzene ring. So that would be three-ish. You might say, what's three-ish? Well, maybe even four. So it would be like 3.8 to four, around that area, 3.8 to 4.1. So three-ish, four-ish, more like maybe four-ish. So I'll, let's just call this maybe around 3.9. But you get the idea, it'd be hugging four. Now, you gotta be careful. If you ever see a 1,4 di-substituted benzene ring, I want you to be very careful of something that we know we're gonna get a signal at seven. That we know. But if you notice, there's an electronegative element attached to this. And whenever you have an electronegative element attached to this, that would make these two protons not equivalent. So that is the same as this, and this is the same as this. So this would be split by this proton into a doublet, and this would be split into a doublet. If that's the case, you're gonna see a doublet of doublets. So what you would basically see is you would see, say a spike, you would see two doublets at around the seven mark. So if you see two doublets around seven, I want you to always think to yourself, there's a good chance that it's a 1,4 di-substituted benzene ring. That's a hard little concept, but if you know that trick, it'll be worth its weight in gold for the debt. You may thank me someday for that. Last but not least, just go over your landmarks. Again, a hydrogen attached to a benzene ring is around seven-ish. None of these numbers are exact. A hydrogen attached to the aldehyde group is around nine to 10 and way downfield from around 11 to 13 would be a hydrogen that's attached to a carboxy group. In the next video that I'm gonna do, I'll show you a more challenging problem. But if you know these basics on the splitting of the signals, you'll be in good shape to be able to handle the destroyer and those problems. I'm gonna end this tape here. I'm gonna make another tape up where we'll do a, another worked out problem. Okay, good day to you. I hope that helps.